welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and you might have the wrong card in your commander deck. Continuing on with this series, talking about specifically wrong cards not working with certain commanders, but also just magic rules in general, certain interactions that might not work. And as usual, I am taking your guys' suggestions, and the first one is really quite a simple one. It is Sword of Feast and Famine with Kosai Pentatent War. Lord. Currently in about 9% of those decks, and this is one that really just doesn't work at all. I just don't think you should have a Sword of Feast and Famine in this deck, period, because of course, your Sword of Feast and Famine is giving your commander protection from green. Now, again, you can put your Sword of Feast of Famine on another creature, you can do a lot of different things with it, but if your idea is to put it on your commander, which I think likely it is, because of course you want your commander to be enchanted, equipped, and have counters on it in order to use its ability, the Sword of Feast and Famine will likely be preventing you from doing so. You cannot put any auras on your commander if it has a Sword of Feast and Famine on it because it has protection from green, right? Protection from green, first of all, will not allow you to target it. So if you're casting an aura after the fact, you're going to target your commander when you're casting that aura and it's not going to allow you to do so because protection says you can't target stuff of that color. And I imagine the aura you're casting is going to be green, so that's not going to work. Even if you you do it after the fact, it's still not going to work because as soon as you equip your commander with Sword of Feast and Famine, any auras that are already on it are going to fall off. So it really is a terrible fit in that deck all around. In fact, even if you have a card that, say, puts counters on your creatures, like Silk Guard I see is in a lot of these decks, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to X target creatures you control, that's not going to work either because you can't target your commander if it has protection from green, right? So really, Sword of Feast and Famine, even though it's one of the best equipment in the entire format, just has no business at all being in a Kosei deck, I think. Moving on though to Cross Defense Contractor. This is an interesting commander. It's not super popular, but it does have about 900 decks on EDH Rec. So people did go after this one and it has a very interesting ability here. Whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, tap that creature and goad it. It gains trample until the end of your next turn. So of course you want to be putting encounters on your opponent's creatures interesting build around and it was brought to my attention that a whole lot of people were putting glunch the bestower in their cross decks in fact 59 percent of decks have glunch the bestower in it according to edh rec and this card again likely doesn't work at all and it's always the wording you got to look at right the wording is very very important glunch says at the beginning of your end step choose a player they put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control, choose a second player to draw a card, then choose a third player to create two treasure tokens. So again, you could be doing other things in the deck, but likely the interaction you're looking for here is you're going to choose a player to put two plus one plus one counters on a creature, obviously one of your opponents, which will then trigger your commander because you're putting counters on a creature you don't control, right? Putting those counters on a creature you do control, I guess you could do that. I don't know if it does anything here. Doesn't really interact with your commander at all what you want to be doing is putting counters on your opponent's creatures but your commander says whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control that's what your commander is looking for in order to trigger that ability and glunch says they put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control and this interaction actually might not work with a lot of different things because this is not you putting the counters on your opponent's creature this is them putting it right you are choosing an opponent to put counters on their creature even though it is technically your card that is doing the effect your opponent is the one that is putting the counters on that creature so not going to trigger your commander because your commander says whenever you put counters on a creature you don't control and you're not putting any counters on there your opponent is putting counters on their own creature so probably again likely not a good fit at all I mean glunch is a card that I guess you could put in just about any deck and it'll be an interesting fit but really there is no interaction here between between Glunch and your commander. So might want to think about taking that out of your deck. Next up, we got another new commander here. Brand new one from Jumpstart 2022, Zask Skittering Swarm Lord. Already 773 decks on EDH Rack, so it's doing pretty good in the format already. Sort of an insect tribal commander, right? You may play lands and cast insect spells from your graveyard. That's pretty darn good. And the wrong card that people might have in this deck is Canop Deck Tomb Sentinel, which is is an insect so it is fitting 
the insect tribal thing, right? It's a 4-3 with vigilance. When it enters the battlefield from a graveyard, exile up to one target non-land permanent and it has unearthed seven. So the interaction that I believe people are looking for here, and again, this is in 60% of these decks, so it is likely people think they're getting this interaction. And I've talked about this interaction before on previous videos with Chain or Nightmare Adept and with Lelia, where you're doing stuff from your graveyard. The interaction people People probably want to look for here is your Canoptech Tomb Sentinel is an insect. It's in your graveyard and you may play land cards and cast insect spells from your graveyard. So you can cast your Canoptech Tomb Sentinel from your graveyard. And when you do so, of course, it's going to enter the battlefield and you get to exile up to one target non-land permanent. Incorrect. I'm afraid that doesn't work. Again, whenever you are casting a spell, which your commander says, cast insect spell. So you're going to cast your Canoptech Tomb Sentinel from your graveyard and it will go to the stack. Whenever you are casting a spell, it has to go on the stack first before it goes anywhere else. Spells only exist on the stack. They don't exist anywhere else. So when you cast your Canoptak Tomb Sentinel from your graveyard, it will go to the stack and then it will go onto the battlefield and this ability, this exile cannon ability will not trigger because it's looking for your Canoptak Tomb Sentinel to enter the battlefield from the the graveyard directly from the graveyard it can't go anywhere else first so that interaction that i imagine people are looking for will not work now it's still a good card you can unearth it for seven mana from your graveyard that will work right unearth takes your creature directly from graveyard onto the battlefield so it will trigger that ability and you can exile something it is an insect so it's kind of fitting the theme of your commander but i'm just looking at canoptech tomb sentinel and i'm looking at zask and there really isn't a whole lot of interaction here that i care about i guess your commander does have that pump ability that can give your insects plus one plus oh and death touch so i guess that's all right so yes it still does fit it is an insect it's a removal option although i would say if i'm playing golgari colors there's a ton of other fantastic options that you could be using that are probably better than canoptech doom sentinel i still think it's a good card it just doesn't work here like i imagine most people think that it does might want to consider taking it out of that deck next up we got another new commander mishra eminent one one. And another suggestion that I got in the comments of the last video is with Wishclaw Talisman. And interestingly enough, I almost made this mistake myself when I did my Mishra Eminent One deck on my channel. So Mishra says at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of target non-creature artifact you control, which of course your Wishclaw Talisman is, except its name is Mishra's Warform. It's a 4-4 construct artifact creature token in addition to its other types. It gains haste and then and you sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step again very particular wording there and the interaction again that i think people are looking for and the one i was looking for right so i know exactly what people are thinking about here because i was hoping to do this myself until i realized no actually that does not work is i have my wish claw talisman which of course says pay one and tap remove a wish counter from wish claw talisman search your library for a card put it into your hand shuffle your library and then you donate it to an opponent and of course then your opponent will get to use Use it on their turn right so what people i think assume is going to happen here is i'm going to create my wish claw talisman then i'm going to tap the copy that i just made to go tutor for something that seems pretty good right then of course i have to donate it to an opponent and on my end step, my Mishra will trigger and force that Wishclaw Talisman copy to get sacrificed. That does not work. A very fundamental issue here is you cannot sacrifice something that you do not control. You can only sacrifice things that you control. So if you create anything with your Mishra, then sacrifice it on your end step. If you no longer control it, it cannot be sacrificed and you can't force your opponent to sacrifice it unless you have a card that specifically says target opponent sacrifices a creature or an artifact, right? Here, your commander is making you sacrifice that thing at the beginning of your end step and you no longer control it, so you can't sacrifice it. Now, does Wishclaw Talisman still work in the deck? Yeah, you can still use it, but what will happen here is 
you'll create the token copy, you'll tap it to go tutor for something, then you'll give it to your opponent and it's not going anywhere. You just gave it to your opponent, so now they get to use it. So it's essentially just working like a normal wish claw talisman would. They're going to use it on their turn. It's still a token copy. And then when they use it, they'll donate it to someone else. Maybe they'll give it back to you. So th there can be some politics here. It can actually work. Maybe you can make a deal with one of your opponents where you're constantly creating those wish claw talismans every turn, using it yourself and then donating it to them so they can use it as well. Then they give it back to you and you guys can just keep passing all these wish claw talisman copies back and forth to each other. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun for your other opponents, but it is something that you can do. So this is not a situation where this completely doesn't work. It does work in the deck. Certainly you can use it. I just don't think it is working as well as a lot of people might think that it is. It is currently an 18% of all Mishra decks. So I think it's likely there's a lot of people out there that think that this is going to get sacrificed on the end step before your opponents can use it. And that is not the case. Moving on to a patron suggestion that I got recently. And again, I'm talking about Hanada. There's so many interesting things that you can do with that commander. And again, I'm talking about another card that does actually kind of work, but isn't really a great fit. And that is Maniform Hellkite. This is currently in almost 12% of all Hanada decks. That's quite a lot. And I don't really think it's a good fit at all. Again, it does work because it says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX red dragon illusion creature token with flying and haste where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So of course you are going to be casting lots of non-creature spells with your Hanada. All of those spells that are going to be targeting things are likely going to be non-creature spells, but this really is a non-bow. It does work, but it's exactly the opposite of what you want to be doing, right? Because your Hanada is reducing the cost of your spells and what Maniform Hellkite is looking for is the mana you're spending on those spells. So a card that is in a whole lot of Hanada decks that works really, really well, I think, is Curse of the Swine. This is going to essentially allow you to exile any number of target creatures and then of course they're going to get those 2-2 two, two green boars instead and what people might be thinking here is oh well I'm going to be targeting all those different creatures so all of those creatures is going to increase the mana cost of this spell and I'm going to get a giant dragon token with my mana form hell kite but of course you're not actually spending the mana right that's the problem here with this interaction Hanada is reducing the cost that's why you put curse of the swine in your deck is because you're only going to have to pay two mana to exile all of those creatures so when you cast it, Maniform Hellkite is going to look at the spell you're casting and how much mana you spent to cast it. And of course, you only spent two mana to cast your Curse of the Swine. In fact, with your Hanada in play, it's going to be impossible to pay more than two mana for that spell as well as a lot of other spells in your deck. Most of the spells in your deck are going to be reduced by your Hanada. So it's going to be very difficult for you to ever get a big dragon off of your Maniform Hellkite. With Curse of the Swine, you're just going to get a 2-2 two, two dragon. Now, is that terrible? Eh, it's okay, I guess. It is kind of a non-bow here, right? This isn't necessarily wrong card situation, but I think there's probably a lot of better options here because this isn't giving you the effect that I think a lot of people want off of this card, which is I'm casting a big spell and I'm getting a big dragon. This is just going to get you little ones pretty much all of the time, so it might not be a great fit in your Hanada deck. But that is it. That is all. Just card interactions that don't necessarily work the way you might think with certain commanders or don't work at all with certain commanders. In some of these cases, there are cards that are just absolute duds in the decks that they are in and they're in quite a bit of decks, so they definitely should be taken out. In other cases, they're just okay, but probably don't work as well as most people think that they do. If you have any other suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will cover them going forward. But that is it for today and thanks for tuning in.